welcome back. This is episode 13 of Sanctum Stitching. I'm Fawn. I'm Mary Ann. And we are a channel devoted to cross stitch, embroidery, needlepoint, cruel, basically all the things you could do with needle arts. One of us likes it, wanted to try it, didn't like it, or will continue to explore. So if you're into any of those things, please check out this video, check out the rest of our channel. And on that note, let's get started with today. So episode 13, that's pretty cool. Which I wish we filmed this like on the 13th of a month. I thought that would be pretty cool, but you know, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it no matter when. <laughs> exactly. Um, I know that I have quite a bit. I have a couple new starts. I have a work in progress. I have a finish and I have a little bit of haul. So I think I'm going to hit all of our categories today. I think so. I think so. Yeah. I am not hit all the categories. So <laughs> we'll switch off because the last couple of weeks I haven't been hitting them. <laughs> it's okay. That's okay. Did you say you had a work in progress? Well, as always, I always have works in progress, y'all. As you know, I did. Um, now, see, Jill's going to fuss at me. I forgot to. Uh, I was working on the Frank Lloyd Wright, the number two. We're gonna call this Frank Lloyd Wright number two. And I worked on it some and got the stitching done down here with just the one thread. This right. is done two, okay? And I got some down further, just the stitching that away, just the trimming. Well, and they all time. I'm sorry. And they all line up this time. Well, this one lines up because I also had put the, um, yeah, I, I outlined it first, kind of, and then all of this over here is done in different thread. The dark is supposed to be there. And then mm -hmm. over here is where I um, gridded it, gridded it, mm -hmm. and got where things were supposed to go. Okay. So I compared it to the one I had started, which Joe reminded me last night. We bought in 1994 in Chicago. And I got to looking at it. And I asked him, I said, which do you like better? Well, he likes it with the threads, the two threads, because it's thicker. So this is the one I tried to fix before. Well, I think I've got it fixed. I figured out this was the one that was off. It was not in the right place. So I have gone back and I have counted all these threads, you know, all the spaces, I figured out last night, I finished down to, so you could see I've got it outlined all the way, almost all the way down to the bottom. I've still got a little more to go, but everything is lining up. So we're gonna have two Frank Lloyd Wrights. I just decided that this morning. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, well, I, I actually have another one that Carrie gave us that's a different design, but I thought about it and I thought, okay, I'm gonna get this one finished in the colors that it came with. And I'm working away on that. And then this one, I thought I would take out these colors and do it in something like a turquoise and blues and some greens and, like and maybe bright. some, yeah, and maybe something that look, would look cool in the bathroom. Oh, something okay. Like that, our new bathroom, kind of like the walking the water's edge. I haven't mm -hmm. told Joe that yet because he's going to say, well, we'll see that when I'm 90 years old, but that's okay. <laughs> but you'll see it. It's fine. <laughs> we'll see it. We'll see it. Or at least the thought process is there. I'll get the other one finished, the original one finished, and then we'll see what I do with this other one. But I've thought about that and it just kind of hit me this morning. You know, oh yeah, that would be cool. So, and then of course, I've always got other works. Now I did get, I've ordered some uh, fabric to try for the sampler, mm -hmm. for the Susan B. sampler. I wanted something a little lighter. So I consulted with our friend Denise and she's supposed to be mailing it. So I'm hoping it'll get here this coming week. I talked to her on Thursday and it hasn't gotten here yet, but you know, the mail sometimes slows down a little bit. Um, so works in progress. Worked on the, uh, pretty much on this. Have not picked up some of the others like I would like to. So that's a, feels like you got a lot of progress done fixing that one after yeah. so many years. And. You'd be amazed. And I managed to keep Fritzy from uh, 
getting near the pins because I'm using really large pins to mark on it and such. Yeah. I, these are the smaller pins, but I had some that are real long. Mm -hmm. but they're good. Did, can you see those? Yeah. Yep. Can, okay. Well, I had some that are really long. Oh, we forgot to share what we're grateful for today. Oh, I no. am grateful this week. Joe's broken chair is gone. <laughs> hey! Oh, my I God. Called, I called <laughs> A-plus junk. They, I had a coupon from them from the value pack, and they came. They said, oh, yeah, we'll take something. It'll cost you this much even just for one thing. I said, I don't care. <laughs> Good. Please, say, please come. So these two guys showed up Thursday afternoon after my stitch in and everything. They got here. They took the chair. They took boxes that I didn't feel like breaking down out in the garage. And Joe had been to Costco, so we had two big boxes that were heavy. I just heard something go thump in the kitchen. I hope I don't want to know what. Um, Fritzy's wandering around. I um, We got rid of some... Christmas trees we bought that stand in little urns that we got at Anderson's years ago. Well, we don't need those anymore and uh, got rid of them and old paint and stuff. So about $200 later, it was worth every penny. So that's what I am grateful for this week. Now we've got to go out and get Joe a new recliner. He's sitting in mine now. So, uh, Oh, that's your stitching yeah. chair. Well, that's one of my stitching chairs. I have about three. I have the one here in the living room. I have the one in the den, and I have one on the porch. So, and here comes little one. Fritzy, what'd you knock over? I don't want to. In front of the camera again. <laughs> yeah, I think so. So anyway, that's the excite. That's what I'm grateful for this past week. <laughs> for this up because that, that thing is gone and out of here. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I have two celebrations. One just happened. Um, Marianne and I tried to film this, and my cat went and sat on either my router or my modem, whatever one comes first in the chain of mm -hmm. events. And when you touch the router slash modem, and, like even so slightly, it just cuts off the internet. So Marianne's telling me a story, and Wally went and sat on the router modem so that we couldn't have any internet connection. So I am celebrating that the internet is back. I have moved Wally away from that spot. <laughs> <laughs> and then I wrote down my celebration, which was I jumped back into embroidery. And so you'll see that today. I have a new start and a finish, both of which are embroidery projects. And I'm really excited about it because I like cross-stitch, but I also know that I'm not intimidated by embroidery and some of the things that I am intimidated by with it, I, it makes me want to try it even more. And so I'm really excited to be actually working on that skill set too. Good. Good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, so I have one work in progress that you guys have seen before and that is And a Forest Grew. Oh yeah. By Rosewood Manor. And so yeah. You'll remember this was gifted to us and Marianne then gave it to me and I'm going to finish it as my wedding sampler. And so the part that I have worked on is below the owl. So I got some of these trees had already been here, but mm -hmm. really over here in this section with the squirrel is where I got in. Oh, and yeah. then I flip flopped my colors on the bunny. And if you're on our mm -hmm. Instagram, you've probably already heard this story. But I was stitching along and I was supposed to have a brown bunny with pink spots. And instead, I have a pink bunny with brown spots. But it's me, so I'm not going to rip it out. And I haven't opened this whole thing up to look at how that pink bunny looks against the entire natural forest. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> I told Sean, I was like, well, wedding sampler has a pink bunny. Seems kind of weird. We're kind of weird. It'll be fine. Hey, it'll so fit right. <laughs> so I'm almost done. You can see yeah. where it was ordered out. And so I really don't have all that much. And then once I get that done, I can start working on the actual wedding portion, which will go in the middle. And so I have that all charted out already. You can see I have my line so I can start mm -hmm. in the middle of the tree. And my cart, I marked the middle, so hopefully I don't mess it up. 
I'm not exactly you have done sure. Wonders. Yeah, I'm not sure what color I should use for the font. Hmm. So maybe a type of green, but I also feel like since there is so much color in the piece, I could get away with something more colorful. So maybe comment below if you have an idea for what color I should stitch in the center. Here's some of the mm -hmm. other colors to give you. And I'm looking through the fabric, so hopefully I'm lining this up correctly. <laughs> yeah, you're doing fine. You're doing fine. I think when you do the photos at the end, uh, take some sections of that and put it where people can really see it or something. But the, the uh, reds, because there are some reds in there, aren't there? Uh, yeah, there a couple of them. Like, here's a red tree. Yeah. We also or have even. oranges and stuff. Yeah. Because I had forgotten what some of the colors are. Uh, even a darker, even a, one of the browns might look nice. It might show up kind of like the, but I don't think you want brown per se. Gold might be pretty, you know, a brown, brownish gold like on the fox or something. Oh, you yeah. Want, maybe. You hmm. want something that your lettering would look pretty with. Yeah. So we have a little bit of time to think about yeah. it. It doesn't have yep. to be done in September. <laughs> and I told Sean, I was like, you can see the stitching of the motifs, but I won't let you see the actual wording stitching. And we also said that it was too much pressure on me to get it stitched and framed by our anniversary in mid-September-ish. So it's just going to be stitched. And then together we can work on finding a frame, which would probably be nice too to get his input on that. But that is my whip. Did Excuse you me. say? No problem. Cat, cat attack. <laughs> come on, Britt. come over here. Come on, come over here. Pass your arm I'm psyching him on it. He's got this look on his face like, you want me over there? Come on, Fritzy, come on over yeah, here. Yeah, he wants to get into trouble. <laughs> yeah, of course. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt us there. He's just oh, making no. me angry. <laughs> He's moving needlework around. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> He's okay now. Okay, we're back to you. <laughs> Yes. Um, did you have any new starts? I think you said you didn't start anything, right? No, I didn't get anything started. I've just been working. I do have the, I'm getting the stuff together to start. And I actually had thought I will try and get two starts. I was going to try and start the Grimm's and I was going to try and start my Honey Bee Hill. And I did not get, I got caught up in doing this here now, Frank Lloyd Wright thing. Nice. Well, I think that's a good thing for you to be working with too. Um, I, new start, I was having kind of in a funk this week where I did get a lot of stitching done, but once I finished the embroidery piece that I'm going to save for, um, the finishes, I mm -hmm. didn't know what to do with myself anymore. I didn't have a new embroidery piece to start. Uh, the canvas wasn't calling to me, cross stitch wasn't calling to me. And so I didn't stitch for two days, which is pretty unusual. Yeah. And Finally, it was like 11 o'clock at night. I was like, I need to just, I need to get a stitch in somewhere because if I get at least a couple stitches in, I'll be able to start right up with it again. And that's exactly what happened. So I started this metal kit, which I've shown before. It's the Pansy. Oh, It'll yeah. be and so it's called the Tricolor Pansy Counted Glass Bead Kit with Treasure. And the treasure is there's a little bee, which you can't really see here. And so I started that. I have yep. a little bit of the dark and I'm starting on the yellow. So I've just a tiny bit done, but this was enough. Um, Excuse I could, me, phone. Yeah. you go right ahead. <laughs> yeah, so I could see this fine. Um, and stitching through the perforated paper is really easy. You don't have to tug in your needle at all. And so it just, it felt like this flew by. And then I woke up the next morning and wanted to jump right into that forest piece. So I feel like it served its purpose. So now I have this one, which I think I'm going to keep in my purse. Not so much that we go out anymore with Corona and do things, but if we go visit Sean's parents or something, I'll have just a little project that I don't have to have in a stand or a hoop and can just bring out really easy and work on when I want to, or if I need to feel motivated again. So who knows, long, yeah. Yeah, who knows how long this will take, but at least 
I have it there. And then does Wally, I will need to ask you, does Wally bother you when you're doing beading of any kind or does he just, he, he's good for Wally? <laughs> no, he's not interested. If he'll sit next to me and then yes. just, but Which I think was, if I'm shaking the containers, then maybe he would be, but since I try to be quiet about it and not disturb him. <laughs> yeah. Fritz was knocking over my little stand up piece. So I didn't oh. want him getting it to the floor and playing with it. So now he's over looking out the front window. So we're safe. I apologize for interrupting. So. Safe moment. <laughs> Good thing he has nine lives. <laughs> right. <laughs> so this piece is out of the Inspiration Magazine, which we have talked about before. And this mm -hmm. is called A Small World by Rose Andreva of Russia. And I, of course, I don't have it written down exactly the magazine number it was in, but if you search for A Small World on Inspirations Studio, I think is the name of them, mm -hmm. they would be able to, it would come right up. And so I, thankfully, I went and saw Karen this week, which was so much fun. Um, she lives out in the country, so we got to get out of town, and her home is like its own little needlework studio. And yes. I, I kept telling Sean over and over again, I was like, do you see your future? Do you see your future? Like, I want this. <laughs> you could ever imagine. She pulled out this box of silks and um, all sort of specialty thread by color. And so it was just like a box of teal specialty floss. And I about lost my mind. I just like drool coming out like, oh my gosh. And then we got to go on a tour of her home and see all of the work on the walls. And yeah. oh my goodness, it's just so inspiring. You see these perfect stitches of mm -hmm. all different types. You have stump work where it's kind of standing up. You have Japanese embroidery, gold work. And it just made me want to come home and start stitching. And that's what we did. We stitched for like three hours when we got home. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I went to see her because she had all of the things to help me kit up this piece, which I was kind of at a loss at because there's wool felt under here. There's a lot of silk in the piece and I've never stitched with silk. Um, there's a lot of beading. I wasn't sure what kind of fabric to use. Mm -hmm. And so we spent at least an hour sort of going through and helping me to kit up this snail. Wonderful. Yes. Karen's a She's very much into helping other people with learning. Uh, she's one of our master craftsmen in the guild, you know, from the EGA gave her, she took one of their courses to do that. So I'm so yeah. glad you got out there. I have not, she had a stitch in at her house one several years ago and I didn't make it to it. So when we get to where we can do something like that again, I've got to go see that place. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, everything is so perfect. And yeah. I'm still gushing about it days later. <laughs> so I started, and it is so tiny. Yeah. Yep, so this will be the whole piece. So I cut out the felt, and I got that stitched down. I got the design on here. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you how, because it's definitely not the way that you're supposed to do it. And so Karen, don't look at it. But it'll be fine. I'll stitch over it. <laughs> um, but I wanted to show some of the materials. Um, so I stitched out or I got cut out the felt and mm -hmm. so you have a snail, these orange ones go under that snail shell to raise it up. Yeah. These are two berries, which one goes under the other. Um, and so I think the snail actually gets stitched on its own and then sort of applique later. So that'll be a different experience for me. I've never done that. There are lots of beads, which we were joking about having one of those, guess how many beads are in something? Um, <laughs> how many M&Ms are in this jar? Right. And you look at this pack of beads and you might think, oh, there's like a hundred in there, but I'm sure there's more like 500 beads in here. Oh my. These are a size, I think they're a size 15. So they're very tiny, mm. which hopefully- and she had all of those colors too, huh? Well, yeah, just these yeah. ones, the choices I had to make, and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> these are the ones she pulled out from her stash. I can only imagine, like, the yeah. beads I 
does have. So I need to get out of this apartment so I can have a sewing room so I can <laughs> be Karen because I want to be Karen. Oh my goodness. Her storage. So then these I'm really intimidated by. They are Japanese silk. And mm-hmm. so you can actually separate these. And she was when she was separating it, they were sort of fraying. And of yeah. course, who has ever separate, she thinks it's it's totally fine because she knows that they'll straighten back out. But as she's doing it, I'm having anxiety. I'm like, oh my God, we're ruining the silk. We're ruining the silk. And then she runs her finger across it and it's this perfect silk mm-hmm. strand again. So I know, I almost feel like I'm going to have to be on a call with her when I go to use this. Yeah. <laughs> so she can talk me down when I think that I'm ruining the silk. <laughs> um, but then it'll also use... We made some replacements and just sort of picked what colors we thought would look good and a little bit different than what they suggested. Um, And so for the snail shell, I'll be using Gloriana, and this is a hand-dyed silk for fine needlework in the the colorway Fall Foliage. Oh, wow. It's so pretty, and it's so soft. Yeah. I think perfect snail shell. And then some of the flowers will be in the Karen Collection Mediterranean Silk. Ooh. And so we were first, these are part of the Water Lilies Collection. Yeah, yeah. We were trying to find two different blues, and then we spotted this variegation in the pile and figured I could guess do the two different color blues from the variegation, which will be Mm -hmm. really nice. And they're already sort of corresponding, so that should work out even better than picking out two different colors. Oh, yeah. And then the last one is Auvers uh, Sol- Soli, Soli de Algier. I'm butchering that, I guarantee it. Uh, but I know this is like the big daddy of silk thread. Yes. And so this is the green color that we'll be using in some of the branches. Um, but yeah, this should be really fun. It's going to take me a while, I think. Because down here, this entire thing gets filled with French knots of all different colors. And so you take two strands of DMC and just of kind of corresponding colors, kind of not, and have to work down the entire thing. Then it gets beaded here. And then once all this is done, then there's lots of things coming up here and figuring out how to do that snail. So this will take a while, but I'm so excited about it. And I'm intimidated by it, but also super excited because I'm intimidated by it. Good for you, kiddo. Yeah. And so that's to our friend Karen, because she is she she loves having people learn more about all different kinds of needlework. And she's always there to help you and figure out something. Yes, absolutely. So, so thank you, Karen, again. I know I thanked you like 15 times as I was walking out the door. <laughs> but thank you. Um, and I'm sure I will call you about the silk. <laughs> Well, and it shows, too, the generosity of some of our stitchers that have been doing it for so long, because Maria has had both of us over and said, here, I'll share this with you or something. And other people have. Carol Yanoff has said, you ought to come over. She's not in our guild anymore, but she has said, come over. And Catherine has shared things with both of us. And it's just the uh, generosity of our stitching buddies that, well, if you don't have it, you know, Diane helps get you, she's helped me with finishing and has, you know, used things that she has there. So uh, it's just, oh, look who's coming. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> it's just a, a wonderful feeling that you've got this friendship that just keeps on going. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just, I'm so grateful for it. Oh, good. He's, he's going to lie down now. That's a good oh, thing. Yes. He's Hopefully gonna, he can head, like, just in the camera range. <laughs> yeah, just in the camera. His little ears are sticking up. <laughs> and you said no finishes this week, right? No, no, no. No finishes. No finishes. Uh, I have a finish. And so I, new start, gathered materials, finished this week. Actually, all in one night because I couldn't put it down. I made Sean order dinner because I was supposed to cook us dinner and couldn't cook because I refused to put down my embroidery. <laughs> you know, y'all, she's making me look bad here. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, no, well, there was like two weeks ago. I, I need to get my act together. 
No, two weeks ago, I didn't do anything, so I felt guilty. Uh, no, I'm really proud of you, sweetie. I'm only kidding with you. <laughs> I need to get my mojo here. Go ahead. So what did you start? Oh, sorry about that. Or what did you finish? My, let me side note, if you're hearing music or banging, my upstairs neighbor decided to blare their EDM music and clean their apartment as soon as we started filming. So if you hear any of that, sorry. If you don't, super glad. Um, so anyway, this is a brand new designer on Etsy, and her name is, I'm probably going to butcher it, I'm so sorry, it's Kabas, or Kabisa, Kabisa Zuri Designs, and it mm. is a beautiful spider web with flowers and trees and a hoop, and there's her contact, I'll put a link to her store below for you. Um, and so I decided I was going to stitch this from Stash, and I knew if I just saved this or bought this PDF and saved it online, I was never going to find it again and was never going to do it. So I printed it, found fabric, uh, went through my stash of DMC and whatever I had, and just whipped this up. So here's my finish. Very nice. Yeah, and Very so pretty. I didn't follow her colors very well. Mm -hmm. um, I decided that I was going to mix threads to get more variegation in everything from the flowers to the ferns. Mm -hmm. um, hard to see here on the mushrooms. I have these light blue dots instead of white dots, which match the back fabric. Um, the spider web I did in a leftover crinic that I had. And so mm -hmm. I used up that spool, which if you have any, if you have a cat and you have crinic spools left over, at least my cat loves those spools. So you might want to try tossing them down to your cat when, when you finally finish that spool. Um, and I added a lot more flowers and French knots and things like that to the bottom. Um, I really, really like this. And once I got going, it was easy. I, Karen said that this material is like a polyester, which she doesn't recommend to stitch on, but it's what I had, and so she said I did a good job for Tiam right. So I was extra impressed with myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, one thing I would do different, and if you get this design, is not to draw in the spider web because you can kind of see the the mark pencil markings from where I wrote it in because I don't have a fabric solid gold marker or anything like that yet, and so I would have just hand stitched this and not followed an exact pattern but all the other lines that I had drawn, I was able to cover up. So that's sort of what I learned here. And I really, really like this piece. It's pretty, it's very pretty. Yeah. Very summery. <laughs> yeah, and it's not coming across in the camera, but maybe it'll come across in the photo, is there's a shine to this fabric and mm -hmm. then it's shining too. So it's a really, really pretty in person. And as I'm looking at it, I see cat hair all over it, of course. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Goes with the territory, doesn't it? Yep. <laughs> one of those rollers. Take one of those rollers or, you know, just masking tape. Yeah, so. good idea. Um, for haul, I just had gotten those things from Karen, which I had already showed you. And then I think you said nothing came in for you this week? No, I contacted Denise and she's sending me some stuff, but it's uh, on its way. Yeah. And then... I'm not sure if you said you had vintage, but I think you were going to show us something else. Well, vintage, yeah, the vintage was the uh, one Frank Lloyd Wright piece that was from sure. 1904. And I've got on a t-shirt Joe bought me for when I went down to this. This is two years ago. I went to Lexington, Kentucky for the Royal School of Needlework classes. And this is the week I was supposed to be down in Lexington, Kentucky for Royal School of Needlework classes. Well, I'm up here. So my t-shirt says I am I'm into I'm in a relationship with embroidery. It's not official, but things are getting pretty serious. So he got that <laughs> for me. And I wore it one of the days I was down there and some of the late some of them, you know, took pictures of it and stuff. But it's real bright pink and uh, fun to wear. But what I did pull out was to show you one of the pieces I started, and people in Guild keep telling me, you got to get that finished too. And I said, yes, I know. One of the classes I took was called White Work in Blue. And I 
little trick they taught us was, you know how you used to go to hotels or when you go to hotels, they sometimes give you um, shower caps, you know, the little box with the shower cap. Well, that's good to put over your needlework that you're storing. Now this has still been in the hoop because this has been a hoop, this is a hoop project. The idea is it will be in a hoop. And we had tissue paper that every night we would cover our work with our tissue paper. But this is what I have gotten done on it. And it's a uh, satin stitch and other stitches, bouillon and uh, picots. We made, here's my little pico right here in the corner right there. So I'll take a picture of, the, I've got pictures that I can give to phone. They have these really nice frames that you sit this in under your thigh and then this goes in here. And uh, you just buy different size hoops. So I only got the one size hoop dog on it. But this is something I really do want to get back to because I'm not that, I've actually gotten pretty good on it. Here is where you've done, I've done padding for this and then this uh, satin stitch has gone over it. I did get this leaf done on the little flower. The, um, and the, <laughs> the instructor, she's a sweet young woman originally from Russia and she came around, she was very sweet with us. This was a three day class. And this is what it's supposed to be, a thimble. Hold it and over. Her name, can you see, oh. There you go. See the thimble. Oh. And if you see, here's the flowers here, and hers are darker at one end than the other. Mm -hmm. They're more on the end out here. Well, I wound up reversing mine. By it's mistake. like funny. <laughs> yeah, mine was like, yeah. But she came by and she said, that's all right. She said, don't worry. I said, uh oh, I'll take it out. She said, no, I like it. Just make yeah, sure I, you do, huh? I'm sorry, I sweetie. I like do with the darker on the inside. Yeah, she said, because uh, hers was the reverse, like I said. So she said, no, just uh, make sure you do all of them that way. <laughs> so, and she was, she was really sweet because we have to do, you know, you've got your outline stitch, you're doing uh, the stem stitch and then a outline stitch. And I was just gin and cotton one day on getting the stem stitch done beautifully and went right into doing it the next day as the outline. And again, she came around and she said, Mary Ann, I believe you're doing the stitch we learned for yesterday and that's not the one that's supposed to be done today. And I said, oh dear. I said, well, I'll be glad to rip it. No, no, just carry on. <laughs> that's <laughs> fine. Thank, My thank God. God. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other class I took was one in beginners tambour tambour beating. So I um, didn't get very far with my tambour beating. Well, I got, it was, they give you these wonderful booklets that these young ladies have created. And that's what we were supposed to be doing, this beautiful brooch. And I just thought that would be so cool to have. Well, I tell you what, Tambour beading is not easy stuff to do. You, um, let me find, I'm sorry all this, I had, I couldn't get all this out at once uh, because of Fritzy. You have a tambour embroidery set, which is this little thing here that these long needles go into that. And then when you're doing your tambour beading, you're actually working with the fabric this was on this uh, nice thin fabric. And what you're doing is this is in the hoop and you're looking down and pulling the beads towards the fabric, but they're not on top. This is, this is the outside and you're working on the inside and sticking down and then pulling them up to it. I did get a straight row. <laughs> Yeah, that's I, got a straight, I got a straight row. Da, 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 da. Can you see it? Here, wait a minute. There you go. See my straight row? I'll send you a picture of it. No, it's too tacky to send. Anyway, <laughs> uh, tambour beating and I just don't know if we'll ever succeed or not. Um, 
it was a two day class. It was icy cold in the room. Uh, I went down and asked somebody, could you please fix this for us? And the maintenance man came up and showed us how to work the air conditioning thing. I had two young ladies from Utah sitting next to me that had come all the way that distance from Salt Lake City. And they were just going along, as I say, gin and cotton. And then they looked at me and said, I'll explain that to you too. So, but they were, they were just making, they were making great progress. And one other lady in the class and I, we both decided, well, it was fun to try. <laughs> and we might do the brooch, but it might be that we would just stitch it and not try to do this beading where you're pulling the beads up like that. Who knows? I may give it another try someday, but um, I don't think so much. It, it's one of those things that I at least tried and saw that it was fun to do, but uh, very frustrating for me. Um, this was the bead. These are the beads and the the threads and stuff that we were gonna use in it. So I could always put that together into a brooch, just doing regular embroidery instead of trying to get it even underneath. And then they also had it where you could buy, they had a store of course, and I took I took $100 with me. They told us bring money just in case because they were having difficulties with their credit card thing. So I just took cash and wound up, I think, spending all but $3 or something. But they had other kits from other classes that you could buy. And so I bought this one that's, um, oh, it's a, isn't that pretty? It's a Heather Lewis embroidery. And as you can see, it's a prairie rose, prairie rose brooch. Isn't that pretty? Let me get it where you can see it. Okay. She gives you, you've got the whole kit, fabric, floss, and it's in the instruction booklet. And Joe says, well, are you ever going to do that? I said, yeah, it's a stump work sort of thing. And we've got flowers in the den that I've done from a different class. So I know I will. But um, I just got to get Mac going. I don't need to be buying <laughs> more stuff. I need to just do with what I've got, you know? But anyway, I did want to tell you all that trick about the shower curtain too. But it was a wonderful time. My friend Jill went with me. She went around and toured horse farms and such. And I went and stitched all day long. And um, we had a wonderful evening where they did a closing banquet sort of thing and everything that was served, the gentleman there that was the chef put together all sorts of English foods and stuff and we had trifle for dessert that was wonderful wow. and just to meet all there were women from all over the united states coming there and uh there were a hundred of us each week uh i'm more power to the ones that could do two weeks worth i would have just died <laughs> but i had signed up for two classes this week and unfortunately um I don't know whether they're going to come next year or wait till another year, but they are back at Hampton Court now having some classes in England that are spread out. But the people were just wonderful. And the young women that were teaching the embroidery, a lot of them are younger. There were a few, not my age, but a few um, older, maybe 40 something. But it was so exciting to see young people teaching this too. And uh, if you ever want to look at something really interesting, go out and look up Royal School of Needlework and you'll see, oh, and on Instagram, they did something. My friend Jill and I are sitting right there at the opening reception they had and there we are together. And Jill said, that's the best picture of us I've seen, of us together. I think that's one of the better ones. I said, yeah, it's not bad, is it? So <laughs> we made Instagram, what can I say? <laughs> yep, I was scrolling and I saw your face and I was like, oh, send. <laughs> yep. And then I'm in one of the pictures where they show all the people, you know, that were there. Uh, they took it from, they were up really high. And I'm down in the front row and you see this little pert lavender shirt and this lady looking up, kind of like, okay, here I am. But I, I met people from all over and just had a wonderful time. Just a wonderful time. And one lady thought I was a greeter or something when we were at the opening reception. I said, oh, and where are you from? And she said, well, are you a, working I said no I'm just <laughs> I'm just <laughs> I'm just here 
Well, are you from here? I said, no, I live in Toledo. But you don't sound like that. I said, well, no, I'm from Memphis. But I, <laughs> so it was fun explaining to people where I'm from and where I was from and stuff. But it was, you know, you make a lot of new acquaintances and stuff. So there you go. Yeah, I would love to go one day. I think that would be a blast. <laughs> it was. It really was. And so. I'm sure I'll spend too much money and buy every kit that they're trying to sell me. <laughs> well, you can you can still go out to their shop online and get some of them. So you can parcel it out to how your bank account suits, you know. Yeah. That way, that's why I was glad I took just a certain amount of money because I figured, well, that way I won't overspend. <laughs> I can spend this much and I'm done. <laughs> so that's about all I have today because the vintage is the Frank Lloyd Wright and yours truly again. So there nice. we go. That sounds good. Um, I don't think I have anything else. Just as a reminder, we are hosting the Susan B. Anthony um, Stitch Along. Yeah. And so it's called the Susan B. Sampler. Is that right? Yes, yes it is. We have a Facebook group that you can join. It's linked in the description box below for ease of access. Um, the chart can be purchased on Etsy. It's pretty cheap. Yep. And I'm not going to stitch it, but Marianne and a bunch of other people, I think we're almost at 20 members, which is really yeah. exciting. Yeah. Um, that is going to start on August 18th. Marianne yep. might be doing a Zoom call to get her first stitches in with anybody that wants to join her. Right. Um, right. So we're really excited about it. And if you are too, then definitely come check us out on Facebook at the Susan B. Sampler page. And you don't have to be stitching it to join. Um, you're more than welcome to just come and right. do what I'm going to do, which is check it out and watch everybody else make the progress on this beautiful piece. Yeah. But no, it's not necessarily, for me, it's, it's not something that I would hang in my home, but I also want to watch it be stitched. <laughs> right. So we're just um, real excited about that. And I appreciate all the hashtags and stuff that phone's doing to get all this in. And my friend, I may have told y'all, my friend Pam of Just Keep Stitching told me, Marianne, because we're both librarians, think of, I said, I just can't think up all these hashtags. And she said, think of it as subject headings. I said, oh, okay. Yep. That's right. Subject tags. So <laughs> yeah, we'll get so, to it. On that note, we hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Yes. As always, I don't know if this is going to go up today, which is Sunday, or if it'll go up Monday. But either way, have a great weekend, have a great week, and we will see you soon. Yep. Bye-bye, y'all.